I'm a Pommy, this is a podcast. Welcome to the first episode of 2024. Um, just a quick shout out to the venue sponsors, uh, the London Hotel in Paddington. Obviously, darts is on the up, so please come down uh, for a darts night this week. Uh, check out their website, thelondonpaddo.com, um, and check out all of their darts nights down there. Um, from the perspective of property, obviously talking about my services, if you are coming off a fixed rate, if you need help with property investment statewide in Australia, then reach out. My details are in the links below. My guest today, good to meet you, man. Um, nice to meet you. Founder of Triber, you do retreats, you're a holistic health coach, and Bondi Sunset Music. Correct. on social media yeah uh, you run inner child workshops and i'd say you're a pretty funny creator thank you very much it was much. funny i was watching your um stories on instagram the other day and i saw that you were doing a retreat was it a couple of weekends yeah ago? yeah two weeks ago and you were in some pretty leery budgie smugglers <laughs> yellow ones and you were <laughs> reminding it. me have you seen couples retreat couples retreat yeah oh. there's, I think a, there's yo- a scene there's a yoga instructor oh my on there god i never Salvador. made that connection <laughs> God, I could so totally do that guy. Fuck. But the thing is, the way that a lot of that like Hollywood programming, yeah. it influences you subconsciously. Where all yeah. of a sudden now I'm like dancing like Latrell from mm. White Tricks, and that was me on the. Uh, like genuinely, I watched it and I was like, "That's Salvador of couples with this fucking Right. Before we get into all of the stuff that you're doing now, mm. um, let's let's talk about your background and your upbringing, sort of where you come from in Sydney and mm. what your mm. life was like coming up. Beautiful. All right. So, yeah, I just want to say thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here. This is an incredible space to go yeah, here. It's mad. Beautiful cameras and cameramen. These yeah. cameramen, are, they're, they're, yeah, they've yeah. taken it to a new level this yeah. year, that's for sure. And they're extra, <laughs> extra beautiful as well, so make it <laughs> cruise the ambience. Um, so, yeah, just thanks for having me on. Really appreciate it. A uh, bit about me uh, and my backstory. So, um, Lebanese background, <coughs> parents uh, came and immigrated to Australia fleeing the civil war in the 70s. So I'm first generation here. Grew up in, in Western Sydney. Um, and yeah, probably life started to get a little bit hectic for me when I was about eight years old. I was the man of the house, uh, single mum, four kids. Did uh, dad left at that age? Yeah, dad left at that age. Um, and yeah, I was in a house with four women, so I was the only man in that house. And uh, we started like struggling a lot, like financially at that time. So mm. you grow up much faster, and you start. To it's very similar to me actually. My oh, yeah? dad, my dad and mum split up when I was three. Okay. And then we stopped. Our sort of relationship broke down when I was twelve. Okay. And my mum always worked in like minimum wage jobs and. Her, her her job was more like making me happy than her thinking about herself. So mm. yeah, it's uh, it's funny that you've had that sort of upbringing as well. Because mm. mine was I felt like I had to grow up quite quickly. Oh yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, cooking dinners yourself at night because mum was working late, or you know, helping out making. You know, you hear your kids, your mates at school, and they're like, "Oh, mum made me this lunchbox." I'm like, "Well, I had to make my own." You know, yeah, like, you yeah, know, yeah, those yeah. silly things like that that kind yeah. of like differentiate you. L- lunch for for us at school was 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 it like a you're in the jungle like i went to school with a lot of uh mm. like islanders yeah like polynesians yeah. and they were hungry and they love to eat bro. they'd just take food <laughs> and you gotta fight for your food it was just like i felt like i was in you know that movie the chimpanzee empires or something yeah, like that yeah, yeah, yeah. Like school was a bit like that yeah. it was good good memories of character yeah. development um so yeah, by the age of eight, uh, single mum, four kids, we uh, then started living in housing commission, which is like government housing. Yeah. So struggled a lot financially at that time as well. And um, at that time I was just dealing with a lot of shit that I had no idea what it was. Mm. You, know, you don't hear about it, uh, you know, mental health wasn't really spoken about much. Culturally, where I grew up as well, a lot of people within my extended family, there was still you know, held into their, like, you know, family units because, like, culturally it's like you stay with your partner yeah, forever yeah, yeah, sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. So we were kind of like the outcasts in a way and, and mm. that, like, created more of a sense of, like, isolation to the experience I was going through. So you're going through a lot of pain. Uh, sorry, I was going through a lot of pain and loneliness and I found different ways to try and cope with that. I was addicted to video games. I used to play like video games for like 16 hours a day. Yeah, I used to play Gran Turismo for about eight hours a day. Yeah, wow. Because well, yeah, like, yeah. um, 
I don't know if you found this as well, mm. but I think it was our, because you're born in the, we found out kind of born similar yeah, time, right. right? Well, we grew up in like, <coughs> that technology. So yeah, era. so like the first, I don't know, up until about 2000, yeah, mm. like PlayStation 1 came out, yeah. and then like, well, it was kind of Sega and stuff like that. Before that, was, it was all like, like Game Boys and yeah, shit. Yeah, like, and then it was yeah. like PS2s and mm. whatever, and it was like... Then, Xbox, Halo. Yeah, you used to like go and knock on people's doors and be like, coming out, mate. Yeah, or like, yeah, you yeah. know, you'd be ringing there, you have to remember, memorize their home number. And you'd like call them up and be like, "Are you in?" Like I'll pop round on my bike, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then like people just stopped going out or started to stop going out. Mm, and then I found mm, myself isolated, so I was like, "Well, I'm just gonna sit in and play games if no mm. one else is out playing," you know. Like, and then you kind of get stuck in that. Oh, big time! For me, it was like <coughs> that. The gaming just allowed me to disassociate from the world and live in my own little fantasy in land, bubble, where yeah. my character in the game was like getting stronger and empowering and like dominating others but mm. like my character in real life was just like a dweeb fucking <laughs> baggy eyes and eating cocoa pops and getting yeah. angry anytime anytime someone would come in the room and tell me like just one question i would like get angry and like it was just like yeah, no. very emotionally dysregulated lack of structure i wasn't yeah. succeeding in school or sports nothing like yeah. i was just failing at everything and didn't give a fuck about it all but mm. deep down obviously did so that was like part of the teenage years and then it was a pretty rough area where I grew up as well a lot of people carried knives and and uh, you know there was like lower socioeconomic status uh, parts of it as well and mm. people from surrounding areas would come in so there was like this sort of lots of scraps and yeah stuff like there's that. like this value of connecting with another group <clears throat> of young men to give you a sense of security and mm. meaning and like the whole primitive tribalism like yeah. i'm this group you're that group yeah, so. i'm from that school you're from that exactly school, you're yeah. from that postcode and i'm yeah, from that exactly. postcode and it's <laughs> stupid it's yeah like, it's just dumb isn't it yeah, like, yeah. when you're young you do it so when like what happened after school like what kind of direction did you go down because obviously you didn't reach this point like what what you're doing now straight yeah, away definitely yeah. not so i got into a few fights and uh, after one of the fights i got into i got pretty like basically me and a mate of mine got jumped by a larger group of older guys yeah. that were much bigger than us and we got destroyed we got pummeled we kicked on the face everything it's not nice is it it's not nice at all <laughs> no, no. and i remember after that I just had all these thoughts going through my head like, okay, if if these guys can bash me so easily and knock me out cold, like what would happen if a group of men come and try and rob my house? Because yeah. our house had been robbed before that. Mm. And so that, that obviously that trauma, that memory has been there where mm. okay, I'm the man of the house. Our house has already been robbed. Like if someone comes to try and rob the house, I am the one that has to like protect, protect my mum and yeah, sisters, yeah, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So you get these thoughts going through your head, um, and and therefore it placed value for me to go and be like, all right, you got to go learn how to fight. You got to fucking, and that's why I started boxing and training, and you know, obviously now like I'm into training and You're fitness. Jacked. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Pretty jacked. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Just came here for the compliments. <laughs> I got the seat with the best lighting. <laughs> Look how jacked up the lighting's buddy. Anyway, um, so yeah, training that got me into like the whole health. Mm. Uh, you know path and like thinking about my training and health so that got me on the path that I'm into now um, but um, after school I uh, studied film and TV oh cool yeah so I was like a very, very creative person <laughs> uh, drama art and like creative writing in English were like my favorite subjects mm. ancient history like uh, you know I sucked at everything else but I just loved all that sort of stuff, stuff yeah. and um, yeah I just saw myself like traveling to different countries and making documentaries and you know like you know like Louis Theroux like going yeah. around like hanging out with a bunch of gangsters and be like why do you stab people in the face you know yeah, I, mean? yeah, just, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, I just wanted yeah. to do that I yeah. just want to talk to people yeah. and like connect to different turning people turning up to sex parties and being the awkward one there <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. just here documenting, just documenting I don't have do... these fetishes <laughs> <laughs> You know Louis got involved in a couple of those. <laughs> those. <laughs> Definitely the <a> CD bastard. <laughs> um, so yeah, so yeah, that studied film and TV, and then um, uh, I, I did. I was poor as fuck, so I'm like, fuck, yeah, like I love film and TV. And it's like the the dilemma of being a creative. Mm. Like you love it, but it's like 
the chances of you actually making like money out of this to sustain you like at that time money was more valuable to me so i had yeah. to compromise for my like biggest well, yeah, passion yeah, yeah. something that i was still passionate about but something that i knew was going to make me more money now so then i got into like personal training yeah because I, I, was, I was at the gym and some guy said he makes like three grand a week i was like what and then when you got into it you realized it was bullshit <laughs> <laughs> well actually actually i did really well at pt yeah, yeah, yeah. I, no i did I, actually I, I, I killed it like i was yeah. I made really good money, but then eventually, like from PT, you know, you're essentially like a cheap therapist. Yeah. And then eventually, it got me into what I'm doing now. Which where, is, where did you? Where did you? Um, so did you go traveling before the PT or? After yeah, the uh, during it. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. Uh, as I was PT and uh, had my first girlfriend and fell in love, but then she broke up with me because I had no idea what I was fucking doing when it came to all that communication stuff. Yeah. Pretty much all the stuff that we might end up talking about that I had to learn. <laughs> I was fucking shit at it. Um, and then I just decided, I'm like, I need to get my mind off like the thoughts and the depression and the mm. anxiety. I can't sleep because of the breakup, you know? Mm. I didn't know how to process it. Yeah. It's the first time I've ever really had to grieve and like process yeah. something. Because before Sucks. that, it was always just like, be tough guy, Lebanese from Western Sydney. <laughs> like it's just that, that sort yeah, of mentality, yeah. right? Yeah. So the only thing I could think of doing was just going and booking a trip that was going to get my mind off of it. Yeah. So I decided to book a trip to South America. Cool. And then that's when I started like doing all the stuff that my heart, my soul wanted to do, like going mm. to favelas and jungles and Amazon and temples and like all this random stuff. And it started to open me up a lot more and just kind of expand my perspective on mm. things and break out of those you know, paradigms that have been like so familiar to me growing up in the environment that I was in. And that really start, that got me off on like the path of like traveling and placing a lot of value on that and then learning from it at the same time. It's funny because I, I always say to people, um, like I was, I was fortunate in the sense that I kind of joined the military when I left school mm. um, and you kind of travel as part of it and you get lots of extended time off. So you have to have a Christmas break, you have to have a summer leave and each of them are like three or four weeks, so we would always go traveling. Um, but <clears throat> there's a lot of people that will go to college and university with no real idea of what the fuck they've signed up for. Mm -hmm. And I always say to them, hey, just, just honestly, just go traveling. Oh, yeah. Because it just opens up a new perspective on the world. Mm. Like you see poverty, but true poverty for the, like you thought you were poor, Exactly. And go to go somewhere. Exactly. Like, you know, and then you you're like these guys are like trekking to get water every day. And That's right. Living under a, you know tarpaulin sheet. You know, it's pissing it down with rain and you know the mud on the floor that they're sleeping on. It's like yeah. that's like very you know, very humbling. It's, experience. Yeah, it's very yeah, eye opening yeah, yeah. when you go traveling. Because yeah. um, when you're growing up and you're going through your own <clears throat> problems, it's all about mm, you and mm. you know I'm the victim of the and it's all valid. It's all understandable <clears throat> that you know we have these 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 wounds that we experience from our own subjective experience but i think going through those experiences where i'm like you know seeing some guy without legs and he's blind on the middle of the floor like begging for money in like yeah. some slum in africa you're just like Fuck. yeah what have i got to worry about jeez you know yeah and and it really does have it did it did have a very positive effect on me it, it just had an effect where i'd come back to australia be a lot more grateful for mm. you know where i live where i am and 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 uh, honoring all the shit that my ancestors went through before me for me mm. to be where I am today yeah, yeah, yeah. so that I have these opportunities that I have then it almost gave me it ignited like this desire to like go and use the opportunities as much as I could and that's what then got me into setting up all these communities and you know the drumming and the retreats and mm. you know all this stuff and trying to share some of these insights that I've gotten um, yeah, it's mad. I like we went to we ended up in Djibouti once, oh, which yeah. is like the east of Ethiopia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and I remember turning up there, and like the first person we met getting off this ship, we were on like a military ship, and the first person we met getting off this ship was like a a, a police officer. Okay. And they were escorting us to the hotel, mm. like a like an armed unit, and the guy was full on eating amphetamine. And this was the, the police chief. officer. Yeah, this was the chief of the police, like the police yeah, department, right. and he was off his face. Yeah, right. And we were like, "This is the guy running the security team, Jeez. taking us to the play." And yeah. then we got to the hotel, and it's like you know, five star resort, you know, that we were staying at, like mm. just temporarily while the while the ship was refueling, and um, <clears throat> like they let us out for the day. And these American soldiers were walking around. They had this, they had this T-shirt on. It was like Djibouti taxi, the ride of your life, mm. and it was just a burnt out car. 
And I was like, well, why are they all wearing these t-shirts? And you go outside and you see the taxi rank and it is just guys hot wiring their own cars because every single panel has been robbed off of the vehicle. Okay. So there's literally just seats, the shell of the car, no right. lights, the steering wheel <laughs> and the thing. Cool. And like, you're like, oh my God, like this is, you know, this is what their life yeah, is like every yeah, day. Yeah. But like, you, you know, you'd have women walking up into you offering sexual services mm. for like a dollar. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. like you say, like guys with no legs you mm, know, mm, are mm. begging for money. It's, it's truly like eye opening. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I feel like there is a lot of Aussies that don't see oh, that yeah. side of things. Like Definitely not, definitely not, yeah. You know, you meet people in the northern beaches that have never been to the eastern suburbs. Like, it's just crazy. <laughs> like, it's wild. You, you understand right? how many people I meet from the eastern suburbs and never been to the west? They're too scared to go to the western suburbs. The best kebabs. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, it's the best food there. If you want good, you want good yeah. food there, you got to yeah. go away. You don't get a good kebab in the eastern <laughs> no, suburbs or the northern not. beaches. Like, oh, have you ever been out after night? I'm like, oh, what's this shit? <laughs> um, so, like, after you go traveling, you obviously get into the PT world. Mm. Um, did, were you, did you start off in Sydney doing that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I started working in the city. Uh, yeah. So before I got into PT, I was working in retail. Yeah, yeah. I was actually working at Zara. Yeah. Yeah. I worked at Shoe in the stockroom. Oh, I was yeah? allowed on the shop floor, so I was just doing the boxes downstairs yeah. in the delivery room. I did both. Uh, you know, it's funny because <laughs> I, I got into Zara, and originally I'm like, all right, I'm going to work in the stockroom. But they ended up putting me in the women's department. I'm like, oh, I just need a fucking job, man. I'll talk to these yeah, women. Whatever, yeah. G'day, darling. That looks it. good on you. Turquoise <laughs> suits you. You know, yeah, yeah. I think it's just my ability to just talk shit was <laughs> used a lot to increase sales in that department. Yeah. But um, yeah, I got into PT. I was I was 21, and um, <clears throat> I just remember being like super scared. I'm like, oh, I got to pay rent and run my own business. Like, mm. had no idea what I was doing, but um. Yeah, it was an awesome experience. Connected with so many different people. You get to meet so many different people. Mm. Like uh, people all around, you know, Australia. Like they all come to Sydney and work there. <laughs> so you get to meet all different types of people around here and connect with them on a deep level. Because once you start to train them, they start to open up, and and that's yeah. when I like a therapist. Exactly. Yeah. You, and 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 you know, I really loved and enjoyed that. And you're helping people become healthier. Mm. So yeah, I did that for eight years. Yeah. Yeah. I did a, I did it literally the day, like the, the day I left the Marines, I, I got like a one way ticket to Dubai and then landed a job there. Mm. Um, but like I did it for like eight, nine years, similar to you. And mm -hmm. I just got to the point where at the end of my day, after I'd spoken to like nine people back to back mm. and they'd all unloaded all their problems to me, I was like, oh my God, I'm exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you know. And, and that's the, that's <clears throat> actually the reason why I got into one of the, sorry, one of the reasons why I got into what I'm doing now because mm. as a personal trainer, you can only really listen to their problems. Like, yeah, you can't fix it. You yeah. can't fix it. I mean, you can't fix anyone's problems, but you're not <laughs> in a space to guide them to having mm. like the sort of internal breakthrough where they're not just venting and unloading on you mm. so you know you can it's i think what you're going to find a lot in pt is people or a, a lot of conventional forms of talk therapy as well mm. it's just people venting and then people giving like advice yeah and then that's it you know yeah. whereas there's not many breakthroughs not many breakthroughs yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> exactly whereas what i love about what i'm doing now is um there's far less venting mm -hmm. it's getting straight to the point straight mm -hmm. to where the root of the issue is issue where it is, comes yeah. from uh, them gaining a breakthrough some more awareness some more depth experiencing some healing if there's a core wound there that's driving this struggle that they're experiencing now mm. and then like actively working on like integrating what they have to to uh, show up differently in the world or you know let's say if it's in response to an addiction or relationship issue a confidence issue something like that mm. like some path forward where they can reinvent themselves and redefine who they are and so it's very transformative yeah like i'm not listening to people like even with my clients now the moment they start venting i interject straight away yeah, yeah. i'm like if you want to if you want someone to listen to you go pay for a you know counselor to listen to you for an hour <clears throat> or go speak to one of your friends but we're here to like do deeper work so for yep. me it's actually become very energizing now mm. having those sort of conversations whereas before like i know those sort of ones that you're talking about i used to get home i wouldn't even want to talk to anyone yeah like i found myself getting home not one talk to my missus yeah exactly yeah like, oh what a day yeah like yeah, yeah. she does it now and she only sees three like my, my missus in the beauty industry she sees three clients a day but even some days when she gets back she's like 
I just want to sit down. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, you know, yeah, like definitely. someone's been offloading for me for like two hours, mm. like during a treatment. It's yeah. like, God, yeah, I get it. Mm. Like, well, I used to do that all the time. Yeah, exactly. You know, with people. Um, so like, talk to me about if someone, if someone does come to you mm. and they've got inner work that they need doing, how mm. do you, how do you kind of like get it out of them? And then how do you, how does your program or the way that you look at things guide them into making mm. this like transformation yeah okay <clears throat> so the first thing um, a lot of people that come to me typically come with a lot of self-awareness they may already have awareness on their past and what happened mm. to them when they were young so I can get people like that that come to me mm. uh, in that sort of state uh, or I get people that they've already gone through lots of different healing experiences and they've broken through many times, they've had huge releases, they've done ayahuasca, they've whatever, they've seen a therapist for 10 years, you know, so you've got, you've got people that um, are aware, but they're also aware of how much work that they've already done prior, but they're still struggling. Still struggling. Yeah. Still struggling, so that they're in that sort of state. Or you get <laughs> people that are just struggling, they don't know why they're struggling, where their mm. struggles come from, Either way, every single one of these people, it doesn't matter like how much work they've done before that or, or how much awareness they have or they think they have, it all just begins with just getting clear on what is it on the surface of their life that they're struggling with. Just the absolute surface layer manifestation of it. Because by doing that, it just simplifies it a lot more. Mm. Uh, it, it decreases all the venting and ranting that you're going to get where you're just kind of replaying old memories and wounding experiences or mm. criticizing yourself because it's like, oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. I just have to do this, but I keep doing that. Like just yeah, these yeah. loops that people get Going in, to, yeah. it's just like, what's the main struggle that you're going through now? Just the absolute surface of it. I had a conversation with someone before. And it was uh, lack of confidence to express herself creatively towards something that's going to generate her income. So it's yeah, like okay. just being creative in a way that's going to be like a job, <clears throat> a career path mm. for her. Like mm. that's the surface layer manifestation there. So then from that point, you can start to uh, you can start to go deeper into why that struggle is manifesting to the surface to begin with yeah. so why have you got a confidence issue or whatever yeah. it may be yeah. like like <clears throat> how is this like uh mechanism now how is it being used to protect you in some way protect you from what like so like i don't know if you're open to it do you have something that you could share now like just some surface struggle that you got now in your life that you'd obviously be happy to disclose in front of three cameras <laughs> and, and two cameramen and possibly thousands of people yeah, yeah. Um, surface level issue uh, I still I still have an issue with uh, obviously grew up in relative like relatively poor right, mm, right. so single mum right. bringing me up similar to your situation and I used to have a really unhealthy obsession with coming, becoming like successful mm. for what I thought was success, mm, which it isn't. Mm, like, mm, mm, and it was all money orientated. But I do sometimes slip back, I suppose, and I worry about finances and I worry about this and mm, I'm not quite mm. there yet. And I'm like, right. you know, it's that, it's almost like, oh, I, I know I'm that I'm gonna I'm interject. Doing... Okay. Take a deep breath in, let go. What's the struggle? Being in the present. In, in regards to what? Being present with what? So, enjoying, enjoying and appreciating what I have. Okay, okay. Beautiful, beautiful, okay. Is that enough for you? Okay, it's, it's, <laughs> there's a bit there, all right. Yeah. So what moments do you find it hard to enjoy uh, and appreciate what you have? What, what moments do you struggle to experience, embody that? Um, I think there's situations where I would like to be more present with my kids. Okay. And I'm worried about the other stuff. Okay. And I'm not spending qu like that quality. Okay. You know, I'm quite good at it for the most part, but there yeah, will yeah. be a couple of evenings a week where I'm like not focused on them mm. because I'm thinking about the other thing, oh, I need to do this for the podcast, or oh, right. I need to do this for work, or that email popped up, maybe right. I should go and do it quickly. I get you. When actually it could be done tomorrow, but I'm, yeah, yeah, because yeah. I'm wanting to become this, like, whatever this thing is sure, that sure, I'm sure, sure. aspiring to be, right? Yeah. 
is I'm ignoring possibly half an hour playtime with, with, with you, okay, or, beautiful. Or an in-depth conversation with the missus about mm, 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 our day-to-day -day mm, and whatever else. So beautiful. That, that's probably... Beautiful, yeah. okay. So we can just like kind of <clears throat> simplify that. Mm. So struggling to be present with mm. uh, your kids, uh, your family, let's just say family, family yeah. uh, certain moments uh, of the week. Mm. Uh, and uh, the reason why you're struggling to be present is because your mind is kind of going off into thinking about like things you want to achieve and do yeah. and excelling in your life. Yeah. Does that sound right? Yeah. Okay, cool. It's like the yin and the yang, right? Okay. <laughs> Stop building this podcast, Sorry, bro. I'm just, just hanging out with your kids. <laughs> That's the advice. Yeah, how dare you? <laughs> yeah. Shut the cameras down. Yeah. Yeah. I've got everything it's I need. It's a waste of money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so so that there. Yeah. Now we can start. Yeah, okay. Okay, so, so I could just ask you like a few questions to try and get like an understanding and yeah. you probably already logically know this stuff yeah. but what that would serve as is a way for you to just get a deeper understanding of mm. why that inability to be <clears throat> more present in those moments mm. arises and then by doing that it's like you're getting to know a different part of you mm. okay so it's like here's the part of you that had, who when he's with his kids on those nights doesn't want to be present with them he doesn't mm. value being present with them. Mm. He values more being present with something else. Yeah. And we can get to know him the way that he thinks, the way that he feels, mm -hmm. the sort of reality that he lives in. And then by you understanding him more, you can better coexist with him. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, you know, you served in uh, the military and stuff. And, uh, you know, can I bring up like... So we can bring up... Okay, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you're mentioning... I'm an open book. Okay, though, beautiful. Sure. You mentioned <clears throat> that there was a period where you started questioning kind of the intentions behind what the world was doing going to war in certain places, right? Sure. And the way that you did that was begin to put yourself into the perspective of other people. Mm -hmm. These people that were living in these countries that, you know, your country was going to, to do whatever you, you were doing, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing that you do with yourself. Mm -hmm. So now you're beginning to understand a different sub-personality that you have, sure, a different yeah. part of you. Just the same way that you could put yourself into the perspective of like some Afghan dude who lives in some village with his family and uh, or some insurgent or whatever like you can put yourself into the perspective of them and that can give you more of an ability to connect mm -hmm. with these people like there's this guy Chris Voss is a ex FBI hostage negotiator he negotiates with terrorists and he yeah, says yeah. that they're all humans like they've all got feelings and if you know how to talk to them and understand I've heard about this yeah yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. He, he would speak to terrorists and be like look I get why you, I get why you're doing yeah this. I get why you're doing it America's yeah, yeah, done yeah. this to your we country yeah, you know yeah. they've we destroyed like your yeah. villages <clears throat> and they've robbed you and I know why you're doing it you're doing it to get back at to them get back and them. the terrorists will be like yes, yes that's why I'm doing that's why we're doing yeah, it yeah. like like just seeing the humanity of, yeah. uh, of others yeah 100%. If, if you do that with this other part of you it builds mm. more of a connection more of a connection uh, creates more coexistence mm. with this part of you. So meaning that whenever he arises and you feel him coming up when you're with your kids and your intention is to be more present in that moment, you've already objectively made that decision that no, what's right for me in this moment is to be more present with my children, yeah. not to be working. I've got a whole day tomorrow where I can focus on that and etc. Is you can guide him to be more present in that experience. Mm. And it's not gonna be as simple as just like, hey, come on, be more present. Kids are there. Yeah. Stop being a shit dad and, you know, cause it's very easy to criticize these parts of us. Cause, oh, we're doing the wrong thing and you're not being the best five star dad ever. You know, it, it's like, you know, we're all- It's like a balance, isn't it? You're <laughs> constantly doing this, trying to get to the middle point, right? Exactly. Cause <laughs> him, mm. you've already, you know, you know in your heart what he's been through. For him to want, to value what he's doing so much to exceed, uh, to succeed and excel and build this podcast. You know why he's doing that? Because you know what he's been through. Yeah, he's been through some shit. He's lived in, you know, he's been poor and he probably didn't think he was good enough and all this sort of stuff. So that's what's driving him. Mm. So when you know his pain points, the same way you know the pain points of the terrorist that's gone kidnapping someone because of, you know, his family got blown up in something and that's why he's doing it. Yeah, you know how to connect with them and mm. guide them to a place where it's like. Hey, look, I get it, bro. You know, you, 
you want to succeed and excel and that's the most important thing to you and you're super present in that because that's what you feel like you have to do to do that and you know what? I fucking love that about you mm. I value that about you so much because without you I wouldn't be I wouldn't have this beautiful haircut nice watch and good physique and gotten where I am today you know what I mean <laughs> it's quite the catch. <laughs> so you just kind of sh uh, uh, thanking him because yeah. he's given you so much, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then from there, you can guide him to a place uh, where he feels more. Yeah. All right. Thanks for seeing me and acknowledging me and understanding me and mm. appreciating me. You're giving me what I needed right now to feel more present yeah. in this situation. So that's just like a summary of of uh, the process that I, mm. I would guide people go th through. Obviously, it's much deeper. There's emotions that come up. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. it's like big things big, yeah. to confront. <laughs> and uh, and it, it, it's, it's real when it's a heartfelt experience that you are going through yourself. It's not just like something you're reading, like show love to yourself at this moment. <laughs> like yeah. It's like you going through that, mo that moment where you feel it. Mm. in your body you feel that connection to yourself and you make those links and it connects and it's like wow like mm -hmm. it's a life-changing moment so after that uh what i what then i guide my clients with is then like setting up a bit of a like a like a promise that they make to themselves of how they're going to integrate that mm. that that new uh, awareness that breakthrough that uh level of healing that they've experienced in their day-to-day -day life so it could be when they're, you know, those two nights a week where they're with the family, when their intention is to be more present with them, they then make a promise to this part of them that they're going to connect with them throughout the experience and before the experience with the kids. So to bring him to a place where he feels safe, it's like giving yourself the love that you need so then you can share it. So yeah, it's like yeah. the commitment is you're going to give yourself what you need in that moment so then you can show up better in the world and then, you know, you just... You just you just committed to that, and you give yourself permission to make some mistakes every now and again, not be fully present the whole time. The like whole time. it's okay to have a few thoughts about work and not not try and dig a bigger hole because of it. Like it's mm. fine, you know. Yeah. And 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 uh, just uh, yeah, being more accepting of yourself after an experience like that. When did you decide that you wanted to go down? Like, what was that like point where you were like? I'm done with the PT. Mm. This is the this is what I want to do. Who did you seek to learn from? When, mm. what, what was that moment like? You know, when you you started to go down this holistic coaching type thing. Bro, like <clears throat> PT was cool, but it's still a bit more surface, or and that's fine. You know, yeah. there's obviously a surface to this experience that we're in. You know, mm. it's not all just a spiritual la di da land. You know, yeah. But it was. I was working in an environment. You know, Sydney CBD. Uh, a lot of people there, I wasn't able to connect with them on that depth of a level. And I love that. Yeah. I love going deep. I just love it. I don't know. It's just a part of me that just fucking... Uh, I just love getting there. When I travel to countries, I want to go to the fucking the shadowiest parts. Like, put me on, put me in a dangerous place and yeah, whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. I just love it. It's yeah. just part of me. And just, who knows, probably something from my past, but whatever. It's serving me. I'm using yeah, it for yeah. something good. You know, and I think that's that's all we can do yeah. with the shady past that we've had. Try and channel it and use it towards something mm. good. Make some light out of the darkness, <clears throat> right? Yeah. So I think <clears throat> for me, it wasn't meeting those sort of, um, you know, the, the, those needs that I have to connect with people on a deeper level. I just do, I was doing it because I wanted to help people. But then when I started exploring this stuff within myself, I'm like, fuck, look at this. This is way better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I want to share this with people, and yeah, yeah. and I wasn't afraid to guide people through it. You know, I was like, so I started um, studying different courses and uh, getting experience from different people, and um, yeah, and then I started, uh, I opened up like a studio in Bondi where I started getting clients there and started doing work with them. My first ever client with this, it was hilarious. This guy was like a in his 50s, he was like a CEO of some finance company. So that's, that's not stereotypical at all. Bro, he's, <laughs> he's, he's like, I was like, why is this guy seeing me? Like, yeah. I'm nothing. Yeah. Like, this guy's wasting his money on me. I'm, 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 I'm fraud. You know what I mean? Yeah. You get the imposter syndrome. The imposter though. syndrome, yeah. The reason why he wanted to work with me is because of how I used to walk on the beach. I would walk uh, very like, slow. Mm -hmm. And he came up to me, he's like, 
like I, I don't know he, he just kind of intellectually like, I want to be that chill. yeah yeah <laughs> whatever that guy's doing yeah. I want some of that which <laughs> is hilarious he told me he's seen like psychiatrists and life coaches that are charging him arm and a leg for a mm. session I was like oh, oh, like I'm nothing but I just like you know I'm like no go for it uh, coach him and it was beautiful bro I had like awesome feedback people really started to mm. receive what I was doing really well and I was like fuck man, this is it I love it and it's just been um, yeah it's been just growing ever since and doing like group work like we did a, we had a retreat on the weekend it's like 40 people in a room or doing some talk to me about work. some of the stuff you do on the retreats yeah so the retreat was epic man so um, wow the retreats it's just such a Oh, like I love being an MC. Yeah. You know, like I've been a wedding MC before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like me, I'm just MCing a whole weekend experience. And it's all about having fun, being healthy, laughing, yeah. I'm always cracking jokes, getting new people together to meet and connect. Mm. Um it's just a beautiful weekend, bro. Like I used to go and do these weekends away with mates mm. and we'd go out and like you know, we'd take some psychedelics, we'd go hiking in the bush, we'd have a dance and just be idiots for a whole weekend. We'd have mm. a deep chat, sometimes have a cry, have a breakthrough, like yeah, round the fire. Just yeah. everything, yeah. you know? Yeah. And and every time we had an experience like that, I'd always leave feeling just like wow. Yeah. Just like pfft, like I've just leveled up in some ways. So the retreats is just like a, a just an experience that I've created mm. for people that may struggle to you know find those sort of friends around in the world or mm. their their current social dynamics aren't like valuing having those sort of experiences it's more based on whatever alcohol partying whatever like things like that or they're lonely and you know so uh, or just people that just you know they've already got good friends around them but they want to be a part of a community that's very much uh, committed to being better themselves bearing and themselves, bearing yeah. themselves and just sh being part of that energy so um yeah we find like your best ideas come from weekends like that like because you get to switch off from your day to day and you actually get to like think about it what like, what what it you're out of that rat race exactly. of like the day to day and you get to just break the chain exactly and go into like an experience that's brand new you're learning something new you're around new people no reception no one knows your background or exactly. anything about your past and you're not judged and it's that's like right. a, just like a transcending experience it is it is it is bro it's mad it's such good fun bro it's it's like a good balance of having fun mm. but then experiencing like deep healing some hippie so, stuff as well yeah some hippie stuff so it's not too like serious yeah where you feel like you're at like a fucking church convent where everyone's there <laughs> like you gotta pray 10 times a day and Louis Theroux's only yeah. only eat fucking <laughs> veg, ve vegan food it's like fuck that like it's yeah, just yeah, like yeah. it's a good balance where you get to have fun and you know, we had like a water fight, fire dancing workshop, sound healings. Uh, we had like an ab Aboriginal welcome to country ceremony. Oh, cool. We did like some deep work in like a workshop. We had like a tribal party, DJs, drums, ice mm. baths. Just every, it's just a good weekend away and people, yeah, they feel incredible afterwards, bro. And I love it. It gives me so much energy and just good memories, really good memories. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remember these retreats for like the rest of my life. Like, do you do them like quarterly? How does it work? Monthly? Uh, or uh, two a year at the moment. Two a year? Yeah. So You're trying to increase out, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. We're, we've got our fourth one coming up in June. So we've only done three so far. The first two was like once a year, but now we're going into like twice a year. And then eventually it'll be quarterly. And the vision is I want to eventually do like every year like a festival. Like mm. a couple of like more intimate retreats. But then one time a year, it's like a bigger, like bigger camping event, festival. Yeah, yeah. So this this June, um, yeah, we're just just trying to just progress each time, just mm. trying to grow at each time, learn how to improve at each time. It's it's like that more masculine, business orientated part of my mind, and I love channeling him, and mm. especially when it's in revolt, when it's in regards to like helping people and giving people like awesome experiences. Yeah. So he's just coming out now and just <laughs> thinking about how. He can make things better, improve it. It's just, I just love it, bro. Have you read the book, The Monk That Sold His Ferrari? No, I haven't Where read that like, book. Where no. he's like, he's like a business guy, but he's obviously like trying to channel his more like holistic, you know, side of him where he's doing good for the world and all the rest mm. of it. But he's also trying to be like this business, you know, person. Mm. It's like, I think it's hard, maybe, maybe especially for men to like navigate that mm. and get mm. like, because there is part of you that wants to like, I think men are at their healthiest when they're progressing. Yeah, right? of course. That regression yeah. is when you start to see them getting depressed. Mm, and, mm, mm. You know, obviously there's a lot of talk around um, men's mental health and things mm, like that. Mm. And 
but it is it is difficult to get to that like state where you're happy and consistent with both of those things mm. at the same time and balancing it correctly right have you got to like a you obviously like done a lot of work on yourself but have you got to that that happy place now where you like you get it uh, I wouldn't say it's a happy place. Mm. It's. It, I think if you if you're if you're seeking a life of like progress, it's not. You're, you're probably not choosing a happy life. Yeah, yeah. You, you're choosing a fulfilling life. Yeah. Uh, but it may not be happy. You're yeah. choosing a life <laughs> where it's challenging. You got to own up to your shit. You got to see all the parts of yourself that are like causing you to not progress and you got to be fucking honest about that and mm. that doesn't really make you feel happy you know all the time when you're facing that yeah, yeah. you got to own up to your mistakes like um so ha happy nice. life is just being ignorant as fuck and just denying all the shadow elements of yourself and yeah just, exactly yeah. just living in like you know that's that's more of like a happy life but yeah. i wouldn't say it's a fulfilling life having a life like that so i think anyway for me just going back i think for me like I acknowledge I've got different parts of me I've got the part of me who just wants to go live out in the bush and just eat berries all day mm. and you know find a, some jungle woman and you know impregnate her ten times and whatever and that just like go hunting whatever I live that kind of life but I've got a part of me that you know wants to get a nice house build a beautiful family there be successful go travel around the world and live that life so I think I think it's just First of all, acknowledging I've got these different parts of me, mm. understanding the intention of both. They've both got good intentions. Yeah. None of them are evil and bad or whatever. Like I think sometimes the way that we're, and for good reason too, because that sort of structure within society has led to a lot of shit happen, like capitalism and, you know, you just got to make more money. You know, we've seen like the shadows of that mm -hmm. aspect mm -hmm. of like the extremities of how the human psyche can you know, like just pollution and war and do whatever it takes to like get money and power and greed and all that sort of stuff. So we, we can understand and acknowledge that. And I think yeah. uh, uh, acknowledging that you have this part of you is also acknowledging that he could or she potentially go to go those extremes. Yeah, yeah, go yeah, to yeah, those yeah. extremes, you know, mm. and you have to acknowledge that mm. we, we all have a part of us like that and the more we feed it the more we train it to be like that and the more normal mm. familiar it becomes the more habitual it is and the more that becomes our reality the more we we are that without even potentially being aware that we are that it's just like unconscious so i think first and foremost acknowledging that you have this part of you that desires success and progress and mm. achieving in whatever field that looks like to you it could be with doing creative stuff it could be you know, business money whatever uh, but then finding a way to channel it in a way that serves you, the people that you love around you, and the, the greater collective in some way. So I think uh, it's not the, the inherent like characteristics or traits of that, that, that sort of personality that's the issue. It's how it's used. It's how it's channeled that's the issue. Yeah. It's kind of like, let's say, anger. Anger is also gets like demonized. It's bad. You know, don't be angry. And not all bad. Don't raise your voice, all this sort of shit. When mm. in reality, it's... When and where you use your anger. Serves a purpose in some Serves places. a purpose, yeah. yeah. Without it, you know, we, we need it to defend our boundaries. We need it. If someone's taking so much from Protect us, your family we feel angry. Yeah, exactly. Whatever. We need anger. If you don't have anger integrated, mm -hmm. well, then you're in a disadvantage if you're in a situation where yeah. you've got to get angry, you know. So yeah. I think it's the same thing with that part of, of yourself. And I think it's part of the work that I do. It's uh, what I do, it's called shadow work. And we've all got a shadow, and each of one of our shadows is different. Mm -hmm. uh, my shadow, a lot f uh, growing up, was actually rejecting that part of me, because it reminded me of my dad. Yeah. Because all I saw my dad give a fuck about was fancy cars and wads of cash, while we were struggling. Yeah. So I demonized that, that part. That side of things. Yeah. That side of <clears throat> things, and I grew up with this mentality like, oh, dude, who needs money? You don't need money. Like I'm happy with what I have, and like projecting a lot of that to like uh, corporations and all this sort of shit which you know to a degree I still do now because they need to be held accountable so, <laughs> yeah, those bloody bastards those bastard bankers big pharma big food <laughs> big everything yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway uh, so I, I rejected that part and pushed that part of me away in my shadow and because of that I struggled to be more structured and like mm. planned and strategic with how I went 
about with business. It was more kind of flowy and just go with the flow, man. You know, the money will come. And yeah. All that sort of shit. <laughs> that shit, yeah. Exactly. So I had to integrate that. But for some people, it could be the other way around. Mm. It could be that they are like too structured. It's like I need to succeed every single moment in time and achieve. And if I don't have achieve, I'm not good enough and my mental health goes bang and I go and fucking do drugs to try and cope with the pain of that, you know? Yeah. So like they need That was to, me on my side of things. Right, okay. Because like that was me um, when I left the Marines. Moving to Dubai was like this, like I'm moving to Dubai. This is all the glitz and the glamour and I want to be one of those people who are driving the Lambo down mm, the strip mm, and blah, blah, mm. blah. Um, and it was all unhealthy. It was all toxic. And it was all related to growing up and not having enough and comparing myself to others and all of that shit mm -hmm. and I was like oh god like and it my work was done the other way around where it was like oh I need to like let that stuff go and actually if I focus on it like it will come eventually mm -hmm. but also then understanding that it doesn't just come like you do have to work hard and you mm -hmm. have to do this but you can you can be more patient life's long like yes. you can actually like take a minute and mm -hmm. go and do some other stuff and think about this and think about that you don't need to be all business focused right and the moment it came was I uh, was doing two or three jobs back in the UK. I just moved back from Dubai. Um, 40 hours a week of PT, mm. which as you know is quite a bit. Yeah. Then I opened a gym, so I was like trying to juggle that as well. Mm. And then I was trying to do a side hustle on Shopify and do a fucking e-commerce website mm. and all this shit. And I was like working from six in the morning till fucking nine o'clock at night, non-stop. And then my weekend would be catching up with my friends because I haven't seen them all week and you'd blow out and go and drink too much and I'd, you know half a bottle of whiskey gone mm -hmm. and you know end up getting in a scrap with someone on a mm -hmm. night out just because you're like you're sort of like releasing all your demons right, from the week right right right, right, right. Um, and then I had a I had a fit on my kitchen floor oh wow. I had a nervous system breakdown so I don't okay. have seen it you're like a my all my like, toes the extremities of your nervous system my face my hands my feet mm. had all gone into like a breakdown yeah wow well. and my mum come back from walking my dog and was like I was having a fit on the I was basically having like an extreme 20 26 27 yeah, okay I was having like an extreme panic attack mm, like mm, an extreme mm, panic attack mm. I thought I was having a stroke mm. but it just like after it, I ended up going to the hospital and blah, 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 blah. And the guy said to me, like, you need to, like, get rid of one of these jobs. Mm -hmm. And you need to just do something that as a hobby that isn't right. booze. It's not goal-orientated. Yeah, it isn't, or it isn't goal-orientated. Yeah, yeah. You're not, you know, it's not all about this. Like, yeah, you've got to yeah, do yeah, something yeah, yeah. which is, like, helps you switch off. Be present. Be present. Go with exactly. Do whatever, yeah. That's you right, know? exactly. Um, but well, there you go. So there. there's an extreme example. Like, yeah. Perfect example there. So mm. it's like your shadow... Mm. Mm. would have been like the part of you who just wants to play and like just be and look at a fucking tree and like yeah. wow look yeah, at the yeah. leaf where does that come from like you know just yeah. like that part of you yeah. so 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 you know it kind of sounds like yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the nature of this conversation you're talking about being present with your kids and kind of playing with them yeah, yeah. like you're conscious to like integrating that part of your shadow yeah, I am, yeah. back in 100%. right okay yeah. so so it's like <laughs> No matter where anyone is at, like in regards to what they're struggling to integrate mm. in their life, it's about getting clear on what areas of your life now you're struggling with the most, mm. whether it's taking action on things, being structured and strategic, or going with the flow more, being more present, hanging out with your kids mm. and just having fun, and then just observing like that, because that's what you're valuing creating change on in your life now. You don't need to focus on every single part of yourself that needs to be worked and tweaked on. Just focus on the most important things now, because like you said, it's lifelong process to work on yourself you know it's a it's an unfinished artwork that it is you know you get to say goodbye to and leave the legacy of when you die uh, and then focus <laughs> on integrating like the shadow elements of of that struggle that if were embodied would give you permission to be more present in in those moments mm. like playing and being and having fun uh, in that moment with your kids do you think that there are too many people now in society that have lost connection in that way, that playful, because mm. you've obviously run in a child workshops mm, and things mm, like mm. that. But I remember reading a book which um, by Johan Hari called Lost Connections. Oh uh, yeah, I love that book. That's a great yeah, yeah, book. It is. Like yeah. if anyone hasn't read it, read that book. Yeah, Because yeah. it gives you like a different perspective on addiction and the mm. way that we treat people with addiction mm. and the way that we treat people that are lonely mm. or they're volatile because they've got, you know, issues and mm. things like that. And it was when I, I remember reading it and looking at things from a different perspective, you know, like the people that just walk past the homeless guy and 
don't sit and acknowledge the shit that that person might have been through. Mm, you know, mm, and you're mm. you actually instead of like demonizing those people, like you should be hugging them and right. showing them love and all that type of thing. And that right, right. that book was. But do you, do you, do you think that we see a lot of that in like Australia specifically? Mm. Like I see a lot, especially when I go I go into the city every day for work, mm. and I'm like getting on the bus or I'm getting on the train or whatever it might mm. be and I'm walking in and I try my best I don't do any work until I arrive at the office mm. and I try and keep my place in certain things so when I'm walking through the city I'm listening to some profound music makes me think about things mm. and I try and look at people and acknowledge what they're wearing and mm. there's the guy over there smiling and he's having a good time and everyone else is like this looking mm. at their phones and stuff and I'm so trying conscious. to be such, <laughs> such a conscious holistic guy <laughs> <laughs> but I try my best like some yeah, days yeah. I don't right but yeah, some yeah. days like I try my best to just like I'm going to listen to some you know D- Dermot Kennedy and blah 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 <laughs> and just you know Adele and whatever else as I'm walking into the city yeah, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but how do we like try and reignite that you mm. know inner child almost yeah, that, yeah, you, that you talk about when you do with your workshops yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, um, yeah look I, I definitely I think it really depends on the like environment that you're in mm. uh, I mean the city for sure like that's like Mm. That's like the pinnacle manifestation of technology swiping. Buy this, do this, your hair isn't good enough. Pantene ad, like it's just like yeah, non stop in your face. You yeah, know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I definitely think that, um, you know, there is more, sorry, less of that, you know, connection that people mm. have with each other. Um, I think um, there's lots of different ways that you can create that. Uh, it doesn't have to be in like a inner child workshop, although that would be like a conscious setting where people can specifically work on the disconnection that they have with themselves or others mm. uh, in a space where they could really work on it so then to integrate it in the outside world by doing something different. And an example of that is what I do with the drums. So for me, the workshops is to like go deeper into like the underlying dynamics of why someone, let's say, may struggle to creatively express themselves out and dance in public without being overly self-conscious or mm. needing alcohol to do it or whatever. They can understand where it comes from in their past, go through a healing experience, have a breakthrough. Oh my God, that's why I'm judging myself so much because that happened when I was young. I went out on a, uh, spoke in front of everyone at school giving a, you know. A, they all a, laughed at me. Yeah, if I laughed at me, whatever. <laughs> you know. So, but then there would be like actually integrating in your life where an example of that would be the drums that I do every week, sober, dance, party, drum, everyone comes, dance, let's lose, no one gives a shit about what they look like, everyone's mm. having fun. It's so. that guy that you see at the bus stop and he's just like bopping to himself. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that guy a lot. I, love da- I just love dancing. It's about, um, so yeah, there's different ways that we can create that uh, and reconnect people back uh, with themselves and with each other. Um, so I'd say like, let's say Australia, I think it has a lot of opportunity now to create more of those types of experiences Mm. for people. Uh, Like, you know, traveling around the world, you go to places, there's like people just dancing here and, you know, there's just like... Carefree attitude. It's just, Mm. there's just more, like it's just got a little bit of, a bit more spice just sprinkle all all over the eggs. You know, over here it's just salt and pepper, mate, but over there it's like got a bit of this and that. It's just like a bit more... That I think um, uh, what's beautiful about this country, or you know, a lot of Western countries, is it, it has the opportunity to mm. uh, to bring that back in that it had, but that kind of lost when the technology all started like increasing. But that I think when all the mental health issues that we get because of that is going to place value on reintegrating it back again and making sure that mm. no, it's like no, we we need to have our little you know, uh, bowling clubs and tennis groups and like hiking friends and just like all these little groups where you'd go and connect with people and just doing something that you have a hobby with and yeah. yeah. The um, Australia recently legalized for certain places, Mm. the use of MDMA and mushrooms and psychedelics and like therapy stuff, for right? For therapy yeah, stuff, okay, for certain, yeah, yeah. certain like extreme depression cases mm. and blah, 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 blah. And I know that like, obviously back in the day, I was talking to Sasha about this, 
they used to use MDMA quite a lot for couples therapy. Okay. They used to like go out and have a good night and yeah, okay. do some MDMA and you'd fall back in love with yeah, each other. Wow, and, wow. You know, like talk to each other on a level and blah, yeah. blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Not that I'd know what they're talking about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but, um, but you've obviously experienced psychedelics. Mm. How, like, do you, do you think that there should be, because obviously like places like Portugal and stuff like that have legalized all of this stuff completely. Mm. Mm. Do you think that, I think Australia's obviously done the first step, but there's obviously a lot of Western, other Western countries that are, that are behind on this type of thing. Mm. Do you think there's, def- like, I for sure think that there's a place for psychedelics mm. in, it, not necessarily for everyone all mm. the time, but like if you need to have a breakthrough because there's some shit going on or you need to unpack something or you mm. need to, you know, you're trying to get to the next level and you're kind of stuck and you don't know what way to go and uh, mm. how do you think psychedelics play a role in yeah, I think my relationship with psychedelics, uh, I don't have a relationship currently anyway with psychedelics where like I'm doing it to go to a next level or I'm doing it to like kind of get something out, something of, it. out of it. Yeah, yeah I think <laughs> for me, my intention and I, and I think I think, I think I'd, I'd like to keep it that way this way is just to have fun. Like whenever mm. I, before I take it, like so just, just have fun. Like just, just enjoy the experience that that you have. Um, so I think, but you know, maybe that's just the way that I think more about things. And some people naturally think about more, you know, strategic. If I take X amount of psilocybin chemical, then it will release Unlocked, this response blah, 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 in my blah, brain, blah, and then it will it. give me X breakthrough, and that will allow me to make yeah. 20,000 more dollars every year, you know, yeah, or some yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how someone's brains work great, you know, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not judging that. Um, but uh, it's definitely helped me, I don't know, just... It's funny, like, I look at my mum, she grew up in the 80s in the UK, right, and she smashed drugs. Okay. Like, she openly talks about it. I used to say to her, What's the best night out of your like night out you've ever had? This was like six weeks before I was leaving to join the Marines, mm. and every weekend I was trying to go to a new city across the UK because I knew I was going to go into this intense training program for like a year, and I was like, oh, I've got freedom for six weeks, and then I'm going to be in this thing. Like, what mm. should I do? And my mum, I thought she was going to respond saying, I'll go up to Liverpool, go down to London, or whatever, and she responded down the local on magic mushrooms <laughs> oh, I, <love> <laughs> and I was just like you are such a hippie yeah, like an 80s yeah, yeah, yeah. like carefree attitude yeah, yeah, but yeah. she's like it's funny I look at my mum and she's one of the happiest people I know mm, she hasn't got a pot mm, to piss in mm. and it's mad because um, it's probably something that, that joy aspect of just enjoying like you're saying mm, is, and I'm not doing it to get anywhere or do anything there's not mm. I don't need to get to here or keep going up right. the level or right. whatever right. Right. you're just doing it to enjoy yeah life. you can definitely have that relationship with <laughs> yeah. it like I said I think that's what my relationship with it is because mm. whenever I do it I'm hanging out with my friends yeah I've got a weekend I've got a bucks party this weekend coming up where I'm hanging out with like some of my closest mates mm. these are the mates that I've gone hiking with around the world and camping and mm. you know traveling to Africa Pakistan <laughs> Lebanon mountains like just a real adventure trips and and yeah, sometimes we like to just take some psychedelics and just have fun and just go on a big bushwalk and camp and have a dance. And that for me has been a very, uh, you know, healing component of it too. Or, you know, if something needs to be said, it comes out, you have a cry or whatever. Uh, it's all part of that experience. Part of the healing process. Of yeah, it's part of the, so I think, um, yeah, I think there's a place for sure. I, I haven't had a bad experience on it. Uh, I definitely think that anything that you may or society may be beginning to place up high on a pedestal needs to be discerned and um, not observed in that way too much. Yeah, yeah. You know, because some people, I think, are vulnerable to those types of internal experiences that they can become more disassociated from reality from having more of those I am one I am a goddess whatever it's like <laughs> and that, chill yeah, the I, fuck out I had a, I had a uh, I won't name names but there was a girl in Dubai who mm. was a yoga instructor right and her social media was all of this 
be at one with the world right, and blah right. blah blah and all this stuff and her life was atrocious right right like right. her marriage was breaking down she right. suffered from heavy anxiety but what she was portraying to the world was right. all of this like well it becomes I'm a new this. identity that you form right yeah because, yeah she's yeah, well, made a character right exactly essentially exactly yeah. correct and yeah. and you know I, that's why i take the piss out of a lot of my content yeah. just to have a bit of fun yeah but um i think when you're going deep into these internal abstractions mm. or like ideologies and stuff you can fucking get lost in it you yeah know? sometimes like you know saying i get all these different types of people that come to me to do work sometimes the easiest people to do the work with are people that haven't done any of that any stuff of before. before nothing yeah sometimes i get people i've done uh, this ayahuasca mushrooms seven times like uh, and they're the fucking hardest <laughs> to deal with. To yeah. deal, they're just like they, they got this <laughs> spiritual ego that fucking thick. Yeah. That what was that thing like that show Byron Bay's or something? Byron fucking, Bay. There was like a Netflix show called Byron Fuck, Bay's. I think I remember and that. And I came home one day and my missus was watching it and I found myself getting really intrigued by it. And I was like, oh my god, these people are full of shit. <laughs> you know, like they're like we're in Byron and da 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 da, but they're like all in their multi-million dollar houses yeah, yeah, yeah. and going to these private parties and stuff, and all of their lives are atrocious. Bro, like, all, all I know trash, is like, you're getting now like <laughs> twenty-year-olds mm. having some psychedelic experiences, living in a fucking first-world country, living privileged lives, thinking they know all the laws of the universe. Yeah. Like it's like chill the fuck out. And they've never been to somewhere like Kenya. Or exactly. Like, like you know, they're, they're like it's all no love, idea. and yeah. you know you just have to think of abundance, and abundance comes to you. <laughs> it's like go fucking sit in a slum and try and fucking tell people that. Yeah, like exactly. Just yeah. completely detached from yeah. like reality. Anyway, yeah, yeah. so it's just like something that you know. <laughs> if, if, I, I don't know. I, I just I just think it's important for people to like. Just be aware of that. And also, having these sort of breakthroughs that you get mm. in these experiences, some of them can be fucking profound. Like, you know, I've had, like, visions and all this sort of stuff, mm. you know. Uh, I just think I haven't put too much seriousness or emphasis on them. Like, it's, yeah, like, yeah. it's a fun experience. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I saw some colors and shapes, and that was cool, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think uh, people can get addicted to... Oh, I gotta see God. Like I don't know. It's yeah. maybe this is just where I'm at now, and yeah. and and I'm still curious. I'm not completely closed off, but this is just where I'm at now. Yeah. And um, I think for people, it's refreshing. Like I like you've got a, like a nice balance. There's one thing that was intriguing when I was looking in, into mm. all of your stuff. It was uh, there's this nice balance of like, oh yeah, we're doing all the the hippie stuff, yeah. but we're also like focusing on the business side of things right. and we're doing all the other stuff as well. And that happy marriage of both things, mm. not necessarily just the like, oh, you know, come to my retreat. Yeah, we're yeah, gonna do yeah, a da 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 da. Like it's yeah, not yeah, like yeah. you know, put pure blood all over our face. And shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't know what you're talking about. What kind of experience is this shit? <laughs> How much is this retreat? <laughs> <laughs> That's level two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. After, after stages of after this June. Thing. Yeah. Um, I wanna. I'm gonna end mm. on something. What? What's one thing that people might not know about you? One thing people might not know about me. Fuck. These questions. One thing people might not know about me. Um, Think deeply into I your know. energy. <laughs> it's, it's coming out, man. Uh, I think... Maybe something hard to say. I think... I'm... Yeah, I think, I think just this this there's like this fear of like you know everything that i'm talking about everything that i'm doing is just all bullshit <laughs> <laughs> it's just all bullshit and like i'm just gonna like fuck up you're gonna and wake up one day and everyone's gonna go what the <laughs> fuck is this i'm just gonna i'm gonna have kids and fuck them up like uh, yeah. like it's just all gonna be it was all just like a, a show yeah. you know what i mean yeah, yeah. and i wasn't even aware that i was in yeah. it like i don't know this is like this like um it could be like the imposter sort of thing like the the fear of like kind of failing in life you know i, I definitely have that uh, that yeah. I experienced for sure and I think maybe a lot of people that see me on face value like oh he's so confident and like yeah. you know whatever he's fucking he knows every part of his brain like it's just like yeah. you know it's, no one does yeah exactly no one fucking does and I don't yeah. and we're all figuring this shit out yeah we're all figuring this shit out <laughs> and, and that's why um, 
like sometimes I get people they come to me and they're like, ah, oh, you've got the answers. And I'm like, no, I fucking don't. Like, no, I don't have your fucking answers. No. We're all trying to fucking get yeah. the answers. Yeah. Exactly. Like, I can just hold a space <laughs> so that you can figure it out for yeah. yourself. Yeah. But I think, yeah, it's just that I'm on living with that as well as, you know, everyone has that part of them. Mm. At least I, I think everyone does. Um, and yeah, that's... I think it largely revolves around, like, a future family. Like, I'm, I'm in a stage in right now where... Um, wanting to be a father, you know, I want to meet and connect with someone. Um, so you're on the market. I'm definitely on the market. So I'll put yeah. I'll put Charles's mobile number in the yeah, description. You can check it in there. Yeah, get, get in the DMs, girls. I'm just letting you know this this, pimp, know, this pimple on my forehead is <laughs> temporary. It's going to go down soon, so my points out of ten will go up. Yeah. I'll when find you finally it. get there, we can do a parenting podcast. And I'll give you some tips <laughs> yeah, on what yeah. to do. <laughs> But like, yeah, your three-year-old's going to kick off a few times and yeah. this is how you deal with it. I'll invite you on my podcast then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sweet. Uh, and if someone's taking inspiration, mm. they want to come on one of your retreats, they want to go on an inner child workshop, um, how do they reach out? How do they get mm -hmm. in touch with you? Beautiful. Uh, well, I'll, maybe I'll send you some links. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll you can put attach, them in. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll put I can them in. send some links. Um, but uh, best thing for people... Uh, social media is an easy spot like in my bio you click on that it's yeah. just got everything there it takes after pays it pay credit card <laughs> <laughs> sign up till they get 20% off uh, I've got a retreat coming up in June so June I might sign up to it yeah, it's gonna be good, man. Yeah, good our winter festival. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I'm keen. It'll be cooler then. It'll be good, yeah, for, good yeah. for my pommy skin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, your body's already well adapted. <laughs> to it. Uh, so we got that retreat coming up. Uh, I got a few workshops coming up. I got my uh, 12 week shadow work integration program starting in three weeks. Mm -hmm. So February 12th, depending on when this um, podcast comes out. 12 week shadow work integration process. I can send more information about that too. That's like the bread and the butter of what I do. Um, and yeah, just connect with me on social media, Charles Missy, last name M Y W -S, S Y. You can find me everywhere. YouTube. M Y W -S, S Y. Yes. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Connect with me there. And uh, yeah, everyone listen. Thanks for listening to me ramble Thanks on. Thanks for coming on, man. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. I appreciate it. Meet. Thanks for having me on. Sweet. Cheers, guys. Yeah. Thank you. That is a wrap. Like, subscribe, and uh, get in the comments. Peace.